Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about expressions and operators in C programming language. Uh, what is an operator? How does those expressions work? All those things we'll cover today in our lecture. Uh, so first of all, we'll see what is an um, expression. An expression is nothing but an expression is nothing but a formula in which operands are linked to each other by the use of operators to compute a value that is when you will write something like a plus b is equals to c or c is equals to a plus b uh, it is an expression where you are trying to link two or more operands with one single operator and you will compute the resultant and store that into another variable okay another uh, another operand so such type of things are nothing but an expression an operand can be a function reference a variable an array element or a constant. So whatever the operands that is, you can take a plus b, you can consider array values, you can consider function names, right? Anything you can consider. So this uh, example is a plus b in the above expression minus character or plus is an operator and a and b are the operands. This was the basic thing which you already know when you write something like this. All your uh, plus, minus, multiplication, those all becomes your operators and the values, variable names are nothing but your operands. Okay. Next. So, there are different types of uh, expressions in our uh, C language like arithmetic uh, expressions, conditional expressions, logical expressions, relational expressions. Okay. So, these are the basic four types of uh, expressions which we had in our C programming language. So, we'll see one by one what is arithmetic, logical, uh, relational and conditional. So, first, an arithmetic ex expression is an expression that consists of operands and arithmetic operators. So, what are the arithmetic operators you can, which you know, all your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulo division, right? So, these all becomes your arithmetic operators. So, when you will try to do operation with those arithmetic operators, then those are nothing but your arithmetic except, uh, sorry, expressions. An arithmetic expression computes a value of type int, float or double. So, it can take any data type values. So when an expression contains only integral operands, then it is known as pure integer expression. And when it contains only real operands, it is known as pure real expression. And when it contains both integral and real operands, then it is known as mixed mode of expression. And next coming to your relational expressions, a relational expression is an expression used to compare two or more values. Here I had said two operands, okay? So less than or greater than, greater than or equals to, less than or equals to, are they both equal? So all these are nothing but you are, find, you are trying to find out relation between two or more operands. Such expressions are nothing but your relational expressions. It is a condition which is used to decide whether the action should be taken or not. So if suppose um, three is greater than four, then I'll tell hello, hello, hello three times. If Suppose the condition is false, I'll just tell quick, right? So depending on the condition, depending on that particular relational operator, you are trying to do either hello or else quit. So some action is being performed depending on that particular condition. In the relational expressions, a numeric value cannot be compared with the string value. The result of real uh, relational expression can be either zero or non-zero value. Here, the zero value is equivalent to false and non-zero value is equivalent to true. That is what. If 3 is greater than 4, you will tell either yes or no. That is true or false. But you cannot sell 3 or 4. Right? So, you, it will have only zeros and non-zero values. If you will tell it as 0, then it is false. If you will tell it as 1, then it is true. And next comes your logical expression. A logical expression is an expression that compute either zero or non-zero values, right? What is the logic? Uh, it is a complex test to take a decision. So what is the logic that you are trying to apply? Here also you'll get only zero or a non-zero value that is zero or one. Right. Next comes your conditional expression. A conditional expression is an expression that returns one if the condition is true, otherwise zero. Right. A conditional operator is also known as ternary operator. So in your conditional operator, you can at a time use three different variables. 
So the syntax for conditional operator is, see here, suppose expression 1, expression 2 and expression 3 are three expressions. Then you can write it as expression 1, say question mark, then expression 2 colon expression 3. If suppose I wanted to find greatest of two numbers, then I can give expression 1 as if a greater than b question mark printf a colon printf b. That is if this condition is true, I am printing a or else I am printing b. So in one single line, I am going to find out all the three conditions as well as I was trying to print. So three operands whenever you will use that is nothing but your ternary operator or condition. Sorry ternary expression <clears throat> or conditional expression okay so this is these are different types of expressions which we have and coming to operators an operator is a symbol that tells a compiler to perform specific mathematical or logical function okay an operator is a symbol that tells compiler to perform specific mathematical or logical function so again you here you will have different types of operators also Right. So here generally operators are categorized into three types, unary operators, binary operators and ternary operators. Right. So ternary operator just now I had said no, A greater than B question mark A or B. Three operands will be used. That is three parts of the question will be used at a time. Binary operators only on two variables, only on two operands. If you do the operation, then that is binary. Unary is only one operand you will use. So if I write A++, plus plus, only this A value will be incremented once. Okay. And uh, C is equals to A plus B means you are adding A and B and that one you are storing into the variable C. So the, here you are considering two operands. Here you are considering only one operand. Here what you are doing? You are considering A and B. You are performing the um, greater than uh, symbol and then you are trying to print A value or B value. So, this type of things are nothing but your ternary operators. So, operators are categorized into three types, unary operator, binary operator and ternary operator. Unary means single, only one operand it will be there. Binary means double, only two operands will be there. Ternary means three. Okay. And then C is uh, rich in built-in operators and provides the following types of operators. So the first one is arithmetic operators. Second is relational operators, logical operators, bitwise operators, assignment operators, and miscellaneous or your uh, conditional operators also you will tell the same thing, right? These operators are nothing but your miscellaneous operators, okay? So we'll see one by one. Uh, one operator after the other with a small description. Examples are the common one which you already know all these operators from the childhood onwards you are learning, right? So I'll just give a brief description of those operators. So first, arithmetic operators. So that following table shows all the arithmetic operators sup uh, supported by the C language. Assume variable A holds 10 and B holds 20. So arithmetic operators as you know already plus or minus or asterisk or multiplication symbol division, modular division, increment and decrement. Right. So these are the basic arithmetic operate, operators what we are using in your C. And what did I said? A is equals to 10, B is equals to 20. So first addition adds two operands that is A plus B then you will get some value. Subtract second operand from the first that is A minus B then you will get some value. Multiplies both operands, asterisk symbol A into B, then you will get some new value. And division divides numerator by denominator. Then that is nothing but your B by A, then you will get the two. And you need to know the difference between this division and modulo division. Remember that always your modulo division will give you the reminder. And the division will give you the quotient. That difference you have to know. Because when you are trying to implement term, um, almost basic numbers like sum of a number or reverse of a number you'll be using ma uh, maximum these uh, operators only okay so that is the reason you need to know the difference between division and modulo division division will return you the quotient value modulo division will return you the reminder value okay so that is why you got b by a is equals to 2 b modulus a is equals to 0 and increment operator increases the integer value by 1 if I give A++, plus plus, then 10 will become 1. Uh, sorry, 11. And minus minus decrement operator decreases the integer value by 
1 a minus minus if i'll give then 10 minus 1 it will become 9 <clears throat> So those are the arithmetic operators and next comes with our relational operators. As I said, relational operators are going to find out the relation with, with relationship between two or more operands, right? So here, you know, already equals to, not equals to, uh, greater than, less than, less than or equals to it, greater than or equals to, okay? So equals to operator, it checks if the values of two operands are equal or not. If yes, then the condition becomes true. So if I take A is equals to 10, B is equals to 20. A equals to B. Is 10 equals to 20? No, it is not true. That is nothing but your false. Not equals. Check if the values of two operands are equal or not. If the values are not equal, then the condition becomes true. See, A not equals to B. A value is 10, not equals to B value is 20. So, this condition is true. This is why you got here the value as true. And then next, greater than symbol. Checks if the value of left operand is greater than the value of the right operand. If yes, then the condition becomes true. Yes. So, A value is 10, greater than B. The B value is 20, 10 greater than B. No, it is not true. That is false. And then less than, it will check the value. Uh, if the left side is the lesser value than the right operand. If yes, then the condition becomes true. So here A is less than B. That is A value 10 is less than 20. Condition is true. Next is greater than or equals to. Check if the value of left operand is greater than or equal to the value of right operand. If yes, then the condition becomes true. That is if I suppose I give A is equals to 10, B is equals to also 10. Then you can tell that it is greater than or equals to. Right, but our condition is A is equals to 10, B is equals to uh, 20. So that is the reason you got here. It is not true. And check uh, this is less than or equals to if uh, checks if the value of left operand is less than or equal to the value of right operand. If yes, then the condition becomes true. So 10 less than or equals to 20. Yes, and then 20, 10 is less. So that is the reason you got the value as true. Right, so these are different relational operators which we had in our c programming and next comes our logical operators so logical operators you know already and or not right so these truth tables you will know you you know how so those are nothing but your logical operators okay so the following table shows all the logical operators supported in the c language and assume that a holds one and b holds zero Right. So whenever you will keep like this double ampersand, this is known as ampersand symbol. This is pipe symbol. This is not equal to symbol, not symbol. Okay. So called as logical and operator. If both operands are non-zero, then the condition becomes true. Right. If both operands are non-zero, that is you should get if A and B values are 1, 1, then you will get it as true. Okay, so here you just observe here A ampersand ampersand B is false because A value is 1 and B value is 0. So that is the reason it is false. Next, logical or if any two operands are non-zero, then the condition is, condition becomes true. Non-zero, that is either of that will be 1, then it will be true. So we got here in B A 1 and B as 0. So that is the reason you got here true. Next, logical not, it is used to reverse the logical state of its operand. If the condition is true, then the logical not will be false, right? So, what happened here? What did we do? Double ampersand of A and B we took, that is logical and of A and B we took. Here we got false, but we are what we are trying to do, we are keeping here not operator. Then what will happen? False will become true. Okay, so that is what is happening with your logical operator. And then next coming to your bitwise operator. So logical operators and bitwise operators are almost similar. Same and or operations you will do in your bitwise. But the thing is, whatever the number is there, if suppose I'll give 2 plus 3, then what, what the bitwise operators will do, first you will expand 2 into the binary digits and 3 also you will expand into binary digits. And on each bit, right, if I give 2, uh, 1, 0, I guess, yeah, 1, 0. If I give 3, double 1. So on each bit, 0, 1, you will perform one operation, 1, 1, you will perform. On each and every bit of that particular number, you will perform the 
operation. That is, you will consider bit wise, not complete number. Okay, that was the small difference between your bitwise operator and the logical operator. So, this was the truth table for your bitwise operator. So, bitwise operator works on bits and perform bit by bit operation. The truth table for and, or, and not is as follows. So, if suppose P and Q, P0, zero, Q0, zero, then P and Q is 0, P or Q is 0, P cap Q is also 0. And then if P is equals to 0 and Q is equals to 1, P and Q is 0. Because any 1 is true, then we will tell it as true. Okay. And then P or Q is, if any 1 is true, then you will tell it as true. Okay. And then P or Q is 1. That is just the reciprocal of your P or Q. Okay. Then if P, a, P is 1, Q is 1, then P and Q is also 1. And then P or Q is also 1. And P or Q is 0. And then here you are having 1, 0. Then P and Q will be 0. P or 1, P or Q will be 1. And P cap Q will be 1. So this was the truth table what you need to remember when you are trying to use the bitwise operators. Okay. So yes. So this was one of the example. Uh, so just consider A is equals to 60 and B is equals to 13. And you can do all the operations. So what we did, what did I say? You are trying to do the bitwise operator. So first 60 is converted into the uh, binary value. So this is my binary value of 60. This is binary value of 13. Next, what I wanted to do? First, I wanted to find out A and B. So, what, what is the condition I said? A and B. If both are true, only then it is true. So, 0, 1, you'll get 0. 0, 0, you'll get 0. Here, if you'll closely observe 1, 1, it is 1. 1, 1, it is 1. Again, 1, 0, it is 0. 1, 0, it is 0. 0, 0, it is 0. 0, 0, again, it is 0. So, <coughs> So, bitwise operator of A and B is, we got this answer. Okay. And then the next one is A or B. So, coming to A or B, what we are trying to tell is, if any one value is true, then it is true. Okay. Any one value. There, compulsory both has to be ones only. Here, if any one is also true, you will be getting the true value. So, again, you just watch here, 0, 1. You will get a 1. 0, 0 you'll get 0. 1, 1, it is 1. 1, 1, it is 1. 1, 0, it is 1. 1, 0, it is 1. 0, 0, it is 0. 0, 0, it is 0. Clear? Or otherwise, simply you can tell for and, you should have both 1s. For or, you should have both zeros. If both 1s are there, then you'll get output as 1 for and. If only both zeros are there, you will get zero. In rest of all other cases, it will get the answer as one. Okay. And then next, coming to your um, coming to your A cap B, right? So here, what is happening is either two zeros, it is zero, or either two ones, it is zero. In rest of all other cases, you will get as one. That is. See here, 0, 1, you got it as 1. If you are having two zeros, then you got 0. If you are having both are 1s, then also you got 0. Again, here we got both of 1s, again we got 0. And here 1, the 0 I had, so I had kept 1. Again, 1, 0 I brought, okay, so I got 1. Again, these two are 0, 0, so we got 0. These two are 0, 0, so we got 0. Right, and then we had negation symbol. Negation of A is equals to simply reverse this A. If you are writing the negation of B, reverse this B. That is, make all zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Simple. That is nothing but your negation. So just closely observe. Negation of A is here two zeros are there, so I made that into two ones. These ones are becoming two zeros. These two ones are becoming two zeros, and these two zeros are becoming two ones. Right. So bitwise operators has to be performed in this manner. They will give you some numeric value or decimal value. First, you will convert them into bits and then you will apply the and or cap and negation symbols. Okay. 
So yeah, we can consider here is another example and you can solve it out if uh, you require. So this is uh, and, and is nothing but your binary and operator copies a bit to the result if there exists, if it exists in both operators, okay? Or operator copies a bit if it exists in either of the operand. And XOR copies a bit if it is set to one operand, but not both. And binary ones complement operator is unary or and has the effect of flipping bits. Flipping is just reversing of the bits. And yeah, here is another one. Uh, left shift and right shift. So left shift and right shift is nothing but you are trying to shift the bits either towards forward or towards backward. One bit towards forward and one bit towards backward. Okay. So the left operands value moved left by the number of bits specified by the right operand. So if I give A greater than greater than 2 is equals to 240. That is you can move on with this value. Okay, so when you are trying that you are considering a value and you are moving two bits forward, then you are getting the value as 240. And this is right shift operator. The left operands value is moved towards the right by the binary number of bits specified by the right operand. So what you are doing, you are moving your values towards right side. Okay, so this is nothing but your left shift and right shift operators so that's all for today's lecture and rest all other operators we'll see in the next video okay thank you for uh, watching this video thank you all